Good morning. Welcome printer friends. This is episode five of the Sell More Printing webinar. This webinar is aimed at helping you grow your print business using today's best marketing tactics. I'm Rachel Neese. I'm the content marketing manager here at Marketing Ideas for Printers. And today we're going to look at tips to help you drive traffic to your website. We're gonna kind of start with some broader ideas and then we'll narrow things down for some actionable tips that you can take with you to work on. So before we get started, I've got a couple of announcements. First of all, I wanna be sure to wish you a happy holiday season and a Merry Christmas. Um, I know my kids are excited for Christmas next week. I'm excited, I'm sure you guys are excited. So wanted to make sure I took the time out to wish you a, happy, a Merry Christmas. Also, um, along with that, I also wanted to wish you a Happy New Year because I'm sure I won't get to speak with you guys again until after the new year. So I wanted to also wish you a Happy New Year. Because of those holidays coming up, there will be no webinar on January 2nd. Instead, this webinar will resume on Wednesday, January 16th at 11 a.m. You'll notice there's a week off in between there, and that's because um, on alternate Wednesdays, we have the This Week in Odyssey webinar that are happening at the same time, 11 a.m. So if you're interested in that Print MIS Solution Odyssey, I encourage you to check out the This Week in Odyssey webinar. Okay, we're going to get started. Um, we're talking about how to drive traffic to your website and getting your website some more visibility. So the first thing I just want to mention is make your website the destination. Now, I realize you may be thinking, you know, duh, Rachel, I get that. But before we can go any further, we really have to start with the very basic. And the very basic of website visibility is this. Are you telling your audience to go there? Are you telling them to visit your website? Where do your current call to actions direct your audience? For example, if you're sending out direct mail postcards, but they are asking your customers to call you, but not telling them to visit you online or to get started ordering their printing online, you're directing them not to your website, but to the phone. So just paying attention to where you're directing your audience. We're kind of going to dig a little bit deeper into how you can make your website the destination here and we'll break it down a little bit. First, start by asking yourself just a couple of simple questions, you know, kind of in the mindset of your customers. You know, why should my audience go to my website? What's what's there for them? What will they gain or benefit from going to my website? Now, if you're answering that question, with, you know, well, they'll see my contact information, they'll see my store hours, they'll they'll see where I'm located. Well, they don't need to go to your website for that. You know, Google's gonna tell them that information right on the main search page without them, you know, even having to visit your site. This is why if you want people to end up on your website, you need to communicate the value that they'll get when they go there. Um, if you notice there on the right side of my screen here, you'll see that content is king graphic. So to be perfectly honest, working in marketing, I, I get kind of tired of that cliche content is king. But the reality is, is it's it's true. And, and that's because content answers questions, content inspires ideas, it guides a sales process, you know, the list goes on, but ultimately, the main thing there, why it's king, is because content provides value. If you have that value in your content, and if you're an MI4P website subscriber, you, you do already have that value, you have to then tell the world about it by promoting your content in a variety of ways. Um, you know, another thing here too is promoting your website's values through simple things like blogs. We're gonna get into that a little bit more uh, later in this webinar. But then, you know, an un another interesting idea that we talked about just recently in a blog post was using labels. Um, you know, why not try adding labels to those orders that correlate with the product? So for example, maybe on a brochure or a flyer order, you place a label on the box that says something like, visit our website to learn how you can get maximum results from your brochure and then link them to your website. And you could do that with any of their products, you know, eight tips 
on how to leave your business card behind or something like that that would correlate with the print product that they're ordering. And, you know, as printers, you guys know labels are great. You can easily switch them out, mix them up for whatever content you're trying to, you know, to use. And that will also help you connect your offline marketing then to your online efforts, connecting your audience to your website. Next, I want you guys to start thinking omni-channel. So whether you're posting on social media, whether you're creating an email, sending a direct mail campaign, or using digital ads, you want to make your call to action button on all of those different channels to your website. So we're going to break this down a little and just go through each one of those one by one. For social media, if you're a subscriber to the social media marketing content from MI4P, a lot of those links that you're getting, except for the blogs, are outbound, meaning those links are directing your audience to the site of the content, not to your website. So I want to be really clear here, you know, don't get me wrong, those are good too, because nobody wants to, you know, visit with a business that only talks about themselves. You know, they want to see you as um, a source of information, but not the source of information. So you're a helpful resource to them or the most helpful resource to them, I should say, if you're combining content that, you know, is on your website with content that is outside of your website. So um, that being said, to pull that balance in, you're, it's a good idea to add additional content to that content you're getting from us that would bring them back to your website. So you could pull snippets from the ideas collection tips, from the printer at work email newsletter, from the white paper content, those types of things. That will provide value for your customer and show them that then there's additional value if they go back and visit your website. Um, for example, if I, uh, with the most recent ideas collection tip, right, we did one just recently on a bleed, is a bleed right for your print project? So I might create a social media post that says something like, you know, looking to create your next print masterpiece, you know, find out these tips about bleeds and printing or however you want to word that. But then it'd be a little teaser on your social media post and it would direct them then back to your website. Next, with email, you can do the same thing here. You don't want to overwhelm your audience, but what if you picked you know, one piece of content or you mailed one piece, emailed, excuse me, one piece of educational content each week, even by cherry picking the blog content you already have. This is a super easy thing to do that doesn't require a whole lot of work. Um, but let's say you find a blog post that we uh, wrote that you really liked or hit home, grab the first paragraph or two, create an email from that and then just have like an ellipses at the end, you know, dot, 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 and have read more with a link then that would link them back to your website to read more about that blog. Um, what, by doing that, you're providing value to their inbox, but then that value then is inviting them back to your website to get even more value. So as you're working to grow that value in your website, the more traffic you're going to get. People are going to realize that it's a good place to be. That's where they should be. With direct mail, um, your content could, you know, try featuring maybe how-tos for your content. You could build a direct mail campaign, like how to build the perfect direct mail campaign, uh, best design tactics for your postcard campaign, those types of things. And then ways that you could connect your direct mail to your website is, have one part of the content on your on your direct mail piece and have the other part of the content on the website. With direct mail, you could do things like jokes, um, trivia, challenges, those types of things where like the start of your joke would be on your postcard, but the punchline would be on your website or the trivia questions would be on your postcard, but the trivia answers then would be on your website. And you can do that, you know, use those call out boxes on the home page, those types of things where you can just connect them then from your postcard or your direct mail campaign to your website. Lastly, 
uh, begin to experiment with using digital advertising in conjunction with these other channels. You know, start looking at things like Google AdWords, AdRoll, Facebook ads, you know, even boosting Facebook posts those types of things and experiment with some of that. If you're not sure where to begin, um, I would just suggest you start using your competitors for research. You know, start start a print order on Vistaprint or Moo.com and then see what ads begin popping up for you. Then you can kind of get an idea, what are they focusing on in their ads and what makes them compelling, what makes them not so great. But you can kind of do a little research with that too. Um, you know, just to take that a step further, if you're looking for um, additional marketing research, the same thing, go to your competitor's website, start a print order, and then abandon your cart and see how they follow up with you with their marketing. You know, what is that abandoned cart email look like. Um, just a side note here, um, the idea of getting this omni-channel to all work together, um, that's really the idea behind the you know marketing component of Odyssey, that you can bring in your social media campaigns, your email campaigns, your direct mail, your ads, all those things. And so you can kind of see at a glance, okay, first they're going to get a social media post, then you're going to wait a day, then they're going to get an email post and then, or, or an email, excuse me, and I'm going to schedule it to wait four days and then I'm going to do a direct mail postcard and then I'm going to follow up after that, you know, with a phone call eight days after that. But you can build this whole campaign and this whole workflow that just will run from one thing to the next and all bring it together, bringing them back to your website and ultimately increasing your sales. That's the goal. Um, from there, you're going to track the opportunities and invitations available to your print buyers to visit your website. So along that same line of research here, you know, you're going to do a little research to determine things like how many social media posts this week invited customers back to our website? How many emails or direct mail pieces this month gave clients the opportunity to learn more on our website? And then which mediums provided the best results? I mean, you're very quickly going to be able to see if customers aren't coming to your website because they really don't have enough of an invitation to go there. Um, and same thing with those workflows, that's gonna put that at a glance for you to see, okay, they had eight touches or 10 touches this month where they were directly invited to go back to our website. But if you're not doing any of that, well, that might be why your website isn't getting the visibility that you want. Um, from the data you collect here with which mediums are working best, you can kind of start to build your marketing campaigns then around the number of touches you want to achieve within a certain time frame just by using some of that research there. Okay, next one we're going to talk about is work with Google, but for your audience. This is a really important one. I would say the main point here of this whole webinar, but... Do you guys remember that 1970s movie, Freaky Friday? I think it had Jodie Foster in it, but the, the mother and daughter ended up exchanging places and like living in each other's shoes for a while. And they grew to understand one another's perspective and then ultimately it made their relationship better. Well, working with Google is kind of similar. It's kind of a stretch too, but it's kind of similar. And here's what I mean. So on the left here, you've got all of us people and we're trying to, to think like Google and we're trying to write content specifically geared for web crawlers, you know, and for Google. You know, we're sitting here thinking, how will Google rank this? And do I have enough long tail keywords? Is my meta tag stuffed with keywords? You know, yada, 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 it just goes on. But then over here on the right, you've got Google. And all Google is trying to do is think like a person, to think like you and be as human as possible. You know, Google's thinking, is this what they were looking for? Am I displaying the most relevant topics for their search query? I'm sure Google says that way more technically than I just did, but you get the point. Here's my point. Stop trying to outthink Google. Instead, think like a person. SEO friendly is important, but never at the expense of being human friendly. You want to write content for people, for your audience, and then Google's going to follow the customers. Okay, I'm going to back up and I'm going to say that one more time. SEO friendly is important, but never at the expense of human friendly. Write for people, for your audience, and Google will follow them. 
However, gonna we're going to expand on that a little bit. However, you can do some things to work with Google. And that's the point of this one, that you're writing for your audience, but you can work with Google. For example, you can explore and use some tools available to you with the Google Search Console. Like this used to be called Webmaster Tools. Um, here you can do a few things. You can you can update sitemaps or individual URLs if need be. Um, the idea of just giving Google the freshest view of your website. Using these tools, you can also check backlinks within your site. You know, in other words, is anyone linking to your content, linking to content on your site? And and then most importantly, you can get valuable data like the search queries that are currently driving traffic to your site. When you know what the search queries are that are driving people to your website. You can adjust your content. You can adjust some of those keyword settings on the back end of your website, um, you know, to better fit those, you know, to better target your audience there. Again, not for Google's sake here, but because that's what your audience is searching for. It's what they're asking about so that you connect your audience to your website. Overall, the whole idea here is that this tool just kind of says, hey, Google, I'm here, you know, look at me. Next, number three um, on tips to get more website vi visibility is just working on getting your name out there. If you haven't already, here are some common places to submit your business. There's Google My Business, Bing Places for Business, Yahoo Local Listing, Yelp, Foursquare, and there's other local directories as well. I mean, nothing starts to erode your reputation um, more than when someone Googles your business and it has the wrong hours, the contact information is wrong, your address or map is outdated. Um, if you want to be seen as a legit business, that's where keeping this information up to date is super important. You can also get your name out there using blogs. Now, blogs are great because they're written for humans, they're educational, and they're conversational, and they help to increase the frequency of fresh content you're providing on your website. And not only do your customers love that, but Google loves that as well. We're going to talk more about blogs in a second, but I wanted to make sure that you saw the correlation between getting your name out there and providing, you know, content consistently via your blog. Okay, number four, as printers, you're busy. I mean, I totally get that. You guys are out there trying to sell, you're trying to run your print shop. I mean, and you have to be the boss, you have to be the HR department, all that stuff. Um, so the best thing you can do here is to just kind of cherry pick some easy wins if you want to boost your website visibility and your SEO. Here are some things you can do. First, make sure you're telling your own story. You wanna be working to personalize your website and make it your own. Here's what I mean. So you're gonna have the best results from your website if you make it your own with your own story. On the back end of your website here, if you guys can see my mouse here, here's your, you know, your web pages, but then over here on the left, it's listing all of the pages that are on your website. Now, it's important that you go through each one of these and that you update your content so that it is unique to you. You guys are all starting kind of at that same starting point. So if you want to excel past that starting point, coming back and building this foundation and really working through these pages is gonna be a huge benefit for you. Um, I'm gonna just keep going through that a little bit. So over here on the left, these are some of, more of the pages that you can tweak to make sure they're unique to you. So meet our staff, testimonials, those types of things. And then kind of consider some of those SEO things that will make this better, like your location, your print, your actual name, your company name, those types of things. And just see how you can tweak it and make it your own. Also, I want you to notice up at the top on that blue button there is the SEO options button. Those are some, that's an option where you can kind of tweak some of the SEO settings on your site. So if you opened up that window, what you would see under that SEO settings is you can adjust the browser window title, you can 
update the description. That's the meta tag that they're going to see on the Google search page. And then what you can't see down below here um, in the screen cap is you can add a photo and then you can adjust the alt text of the photo as well. If you're not familiar with what the alt text is, the alt text just tells Google what that image is. So for example, if it's a picture of your team, you might want to label that photo Acme Printing Team or something like that instead of just JPEG number five. You know, this is just a, another simple way that you can work with Google, telling Google exactly what it is so then Google can reference it later in the search results. Um, here's just an example with Brandywine Printing. You can see the page names here. You can see the meta tags and the descriptions here. You know, they're putting their name in here, which is great, that kind of stuff, making sure that these are up to date with your information to tell your story. One thing I want to mention with this, remember here, the key is clarity. Less is more, and I don't want you to get tricky, okay? And just to be clear, I mean, I love wit. I'm all about wit, but here is not the place to be using your wit. Um, this is the place where you're trying to make it as clear and precise as possible, making it easy for your audience, but you know, unique to you. One last thing, most of you are probably aware of this already, but you can adjust you know, the SEO settings on your website. So if you go to my website here and you look over here on the left under the SEO, this is where you can you know, add additional keywords if you want. You can update the page titles, those types of things. Um, one thing here, if you haven't already, you know, this comes pre-filled on your website, but if you haven't added your company's name, your tagline, your city, your state, those types of things, um, that's gonna help boost that SEO. So make sure you're you're doing that. Um, a question I'm asked often is, can I put my competitors' names in there? Um, that is something I would steer you away from. You're gonna get better results from organic, um, you know, SEO than trying to be tricky using competitors' names. And it honestly, it won't be all that effective for you. Um, you can also update your main page title. I think I said that already. And then down here too, you can connect your website to Google Analytics. As always, um, if you're looking at this and just going, I have no idea, this is way over my head. Remember, we have an excellent customer care team. If you need help with this, you guys can always send them an email and reach out to them and they will help uh, walk you through that. Um, another easy win you can do is update your content around keywords. So here's what I mean. Um, before I get into this, I'm going to just say it again. We're not updating the keywords necessarily for Google, but to work with Google, helping our audience, that our audience is the key. Um, I want to make sure you also know that it is not necessary by any means to go crazy with keywords here. Your website, as it is, already comes with excellent SEO built in. So if you did nothing, if you didn't take any of these tips, you're still gonna be okay. It's not damaging to your SEO or anything like that. You already have that good SEO built in. These tips are just, if you are looking for more, um, these are some tips that will help you go down that route. Um, all right, let's start here. I'm gonna look at print art work here in the center. I mentioned this briefly on a previous webinar, but I thought I'd actually kind of show you on this one. So print art work here. Now, if I am a website visitor or if I'm Google and I'm reading that, what, what is printer at work? What is that? You know, do, do your customers know what that is? Does Google know? I mean, print art work is an email newsletter, right? So it kind of makes sense, don't you think, that those words should be around there somewhere, that it should say somewhere in there that this is an email newsletter. Otherwise, Google and your readers aren't going to know that. The description here, marketing tips, humor, sales tips, those types of things, that's actually pretty good. But, you know, will, will that newsletter help me with printing? I don't know. There's nothing in the description that says that. So you can tweak the content that's in these call out boxes to better fit your SEO, better fit your unique, what you're offering. So if I was doing this, I might, um, I might change this to our email newsletter. I might add the word print in here, you know, being aware of how much content is in here. But 
you know, how can you rewrite this just slightly, you know, inspiring print tips, marketing tips, sales tips, creative ideas to help you, you know, look your best on paper, you know, throw that paper keyword in there, stuff like that. But you can kind of just tweak that slightly to give you a better result. Um, over here next to that, we also have um, design edit over there. That's the same thing. Do your customers know what design edit is? Does Google know what design edit is and how to reference it when people are asking Google questions? Maybe not, probably not. So can you update this description as well to better explain what that feature is? Perhaps design online, get started designing here. Um, one thing in the description here that I would suggest is, you know, throw in the top products that are being designed online within there so that the keywords associated with your online design are things like business card, flyer, brochure, that kind of stuff. And, you know, right from the comfort of your own home or design from home, something like that, where you can just pull in some of those other words. Last one here I'm just going to point out is this word local. Um, box down here so if i'm reading that box um you're local to where you know it says this community but what what community is that i could be ordering printing from you from across the country but you're talking about how you're local but i have no idea where you're local to um so that's something where you could just you know make a few changes where that would say people who live in the pittsburgh community or the st cloud community where you're you're using that for clarity, but it's also going to help with your keywords because you're throwing some of that stuff in there. Now, if you went through all of your content on your site like this, you'd probably be in a really good place. But as you have time, I would just encourage you to kind of really look over these things with the critical eye. How can I be more clear for my customers and help in that keyword area? Okay, we're going to move on here a little bit. Lastly, try adding your most recent blog post to your website footer. So we've talked about how blogs help get your name out there and some of those other things. Well, you can also use blogs to help. Um, it's going to help increase your visibility if you look at how SEO works. So SEO is sort of like a book, you know, you have you have your page titles and then, you know, kind of below that and in importance, you have the navigation bar, which is kind of like a book's table of contents. Then you have chapters and then the content within the chapters, those types of things. Well, what if we could bump our content up to a higher level of priority? For example, if I put my blog post and my website footer, I've kind of moved that content, you know, from the middle of chapter five to the table of contents by just where I'm putting it on my website. So I'm going to kind of walk you through how you could do that. So what I'm talking about here is the footer on your website. It kind of looks like this. And I'm just going to show you what it would look like to add the blog and keep the blog updated down here on your footer. Okay, so what you would do to do that is if you're looking at the back end of your website here, you're going to go to the web pages tab and you have to actually create a custom page before you can add that page to your footer. So you'll come over here and you'll click on that custom pages page. That's kind of hard to say. Um, that's what this page looks like. And then I went through here and I just added an example. So here I'm still on that custom page. Um, and then here are the page details. So I took one of the most recent blogs that we've done um, that you would get through the social marketing content through that package. And then I just put that in here. So my title um, is what's going to show up over here. Um, that is the name of my page. The short title, this is what's going to show up actually on the footer. So I would suggest that you make this short. You know, um, and then your headline, that's the headline of the actual blog and then a caption that's kind of going to read like a, a subhead um, on the actual blog. And you'll see that here in a second. Then you'll just plunk in your text here. You can use the WYSIWYG editor here to, you know, make it your own and make sure the links and everything are working correctly. 
Now, once you have that custom page set up, then you can come down here. Remember, we were up here in custom pages. So now we're just looking a little bit further down here on the left to the footer links. And if you look over here, um, you know, the sixth one down or whatever, you'll see that custom page that we just created. New blog, serve, not sell. And then it's clicked. Um, so that's going to be visible now on the footer. So here's what it looks like over here on the footer. Now I've got new blog, serve, not sell. Now, twice a week, I can come in here and I can update that with the latest blog that I have. And that will be in the navigation sort of part of my SEO book um, that it's going to give it a little bit better you know, visibility and better results for that when people are searching for things. Um, this is then what it would look like when they click on the footer. Then you've created this page where you have that most recent blog right there on your website from your footer. So I would encourage you, it's something that you could try to see if you get results from it. I, am, I know of a couple of printers that are using that and have a seem to have pretty good results from it, that it'll help you know bump your SEO and it provides that fresh content indexed to your site and to Google twice a week that they know that's coming. Okay, better SEO, better website visibility really comes down to this. You know, remember, Google only loves you when everyone else loves you first. So take that time where you can just go through your website, making your website customer focused, customer centric. You know, you guys are so good at, you know, creating that environment for your customers anyway, letting them know. Um, that that they are the center of your universe kind of thing, of your business universe. And it's the same idea here with your website, making your website um, as friendly as possible to your readers and to your visitors there. Um, I'm going to leave you here with some blog resources. Over the last, I, I would say, six months to a year, we've done quite a few SEO pieces on the blog. So if you want to read more on this, you know, on how you can create better visibility for your website. There's a few on there. Some ones I picked out here are the impact of social media on your SEO, what good SEO is not, and five ways to do SEO right. Um, so if you want to check those out and more, visit our blog at www.mi4p.com forward slash blog, and then search for printers and SEO or even just SEO, and it'll pull up these blog articles for you. Also, while you are there, let me encourage you over on the right-hand side of the screen there to sign up for our newsletter. Um, if you sign up for our newsletter, you will get those blogs delivered right to your inbox. Um, and I promise we don't overwhelm you. Actually, I'll be really honest that you get one blog per week. It's going to come to you on Wednesday of every week. Um, but you can be looking for that and then have that content right there for you. So that's everything I had for you today. Thanks for joining us uh, for tips to help you sell more printing. The next webinar will be on Wednesday, January 16th. Remember, because we're skipping the next one for the holiday season. That'll be at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. If you have questions or concerns, comments um, regarding this webinar or anything else, um, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach us at 701 241 9204 or you can email me directly at rachel.meese at mi4p.com. Again, thanks for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and a new year and we will talk to you again in 2019. Thanks.